she's never going to fit into skinny jeans with those big thighs. Most of them laughed. I tried not to mind them, but I could feel their eyes watching me as I picked out some clothes to try out. Sadly, they were right. None of the nice clothes fit me. I was just too chubby. I was never going to look like them if I didn't lose any weight first. So I formed a plan. And for my plan, I needed a coach. I called Ned. In fairness to Ned, he never laughed. Not once. He put on a very serious face and asked me just one question before agreeing. Why do you want to lose weight? He asked. I told him the truth. I told him that I wanted to be pretty like my mom. Ned nodded his head and decided to help me out. He did a lot of research. He said that I had to cut down on a lot of things that I ate. I also needed to exercise. I agreed. I knew it was going to be hard, but I was determined. If I really wanted to lose some weight, I'd have to say no to cakes, pies, and ice cream. The night before my actual diet, Ned said that he had a surprise for me. He tied a blindfold around my face and led me to my bedroom. When I finally saw what was in front of me, I almost cried. All my favorite things to eat were there. If you're really dead set on your diet, Ned told me, think of this as your farewell feast. So we had a blast that night. We watched old movies and ate our way through the night. The next day, the real work began. I woke up really early to meet Ned outside. We went jogging after dawn. It was a nice time for the two of us. The whole neighborhood was quiet, and I think I got to know more about Ned than ever before. But after just a few minutes, I was already huffing and puffing. Exercising is a lot of hard work. Pretty soon, sweat was pouring down my face, and I had a stitch on my side. Ned cheered me on until we finished our job. I was super tired and craving breakfast by then. I printed some recipes for you to try out, Ned said. This morning, you can have an egg white omelet for breakfast. Suddenly, I heard a gurgle from my stomach. It sounded like the word, no. Yes, Ned replied. He kneeled on the floor until he was face to face with the pooch on my tummy. I'm sorry, stomach. Katie said that we have to get rid of you, and this is the best way to do it. My stomach grumbled again. No. We both laughed. The noises from my belly sounded like real words. I was hungry, but I was also proud of myself. I was sure that I was going to be pretty and skinny soon. It went on like that for a few days. During that time, I was also sticking to my carefully planned meals and daily exercise routines. It would have been unbearable if Ned wasn't there. He tried to get my mind off my hunger by constantly taking me out for brisk walks outside. One day, we saw something that made me totally forget about my hunger. There was a big poster outside the mall. There was going to be a local beauty pageant for teenagers, and it was in two weeks. I shrieked at Ned and pointed to the sign. This is it, I said. I have to enter that pageant. Ned didn't agree at once. First off, he told me that it was in two weeks, which meant that they probably had contestants already. Second, he reminded me that my dad was against beauty pageants because of my mother. But I didn't see it that way. I figured that if I continued to get fit, I could win. And even if I didn't win, people were bound to notice how great I was starting to look. I could be popular in time for school. I bugged Ned all day to help me. Finally, he gave in. He called the organizers and found out that they could still take last-minute contestants. But there was a catch. I was too late for a lot of things, like beauty shots and pictorials. There were already 22 girls who joined in the previous years. I was going to be at a disadvantage. I didn't know a thing about beauty pageants. Instead of being discouraged, I became more determined. Adrenaline was pushing my body to work and exercise more. I ate my low-carb meals without complaining once. Meanwhile, we had to think of a talent for me to showcase. It was a part of the pageant, along with a question and answer portion and a swimsuit competition. So I rushed in with all the requirements, especially with the official photos. My photographer wasn't all that interested in taking nice shots of me. I guess it's because I wasn't as pretty as the other girls. It didn't help that the lights in his studio started to flicker and die out while I was having my shoot. I heard him say it after he opened his electrical panel. That's why the lights went out. The circuits are fried. Luckily for him, I knew exactly what to do. Expertly, I told Ned to run to the hardware store for some parts. In no time at all, I had changed a circuit breaker and the lights were on again. 
Wow, the photographer told me. Where did you learn how to do that? You're not the typical contestant I expected at all. We chatted a lot about home repairs and even car maintenance. I was happy posing for the shoot. I figured that if I didn't win, at least I already made one friend. I attended all the last minute rehearsals. All the girls were so pretty and chummy with each other. When we weren't practicing walking around the stage, I was just in the corner of the room chatting with the light and sound technicians, hoping that I didn't look totally out of place. Finally, I was ready as I would ever be. It was the day of the pageant. Ned and I went to the hotel, lugging all my stuff around. There were a lot of mothers and daughters there looking absolutely stunning. And then there was me, looking like I definitely didn't fit in. I wanted to back out then. What was I thinking? I couldn't compete with all those girls. Everyone was prettier than me, but someone was calling out my name. It was time to get ready. Ned gave me a big hug and said that he would be cheering the loudest from the audience. I bet he was the only one who was going to be cheering for me. I was starting to feel scared and queasy. I realized that I hadn't eaten anything that day. I went to the dressing room with all the other girls. I was the fattest one there. Even with my hair done and face full of makeup, there was no mistaking the fact that I wasn't going to stand out. I was just too plain looking. Some of the girls were looking at me with barely concealed arrogance. They knew I wasn't any kind of competition at all. What the hell was I doing here? It's showtime! Someone cried out backstage. We were about to come out. Suddenly, I felt an excitement I never felt before. Even if I wasn't as pretty as everyone there, I was the prettiest that I would ever be. I felt a rush and wanted to walk on stage with a strut and my head held high. Maybe this is what my mom used to feel. The bright light hit me the moment I stepped on the stage. The crowd was cheering. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Were they actually clapping for me or for the girl in front of me? I faced the flashes from the cameras and posed. I was having a great time. I didn't know that it would be so much fun. After the first walk, we had to quickly change out of our dresses into our talent costumes. I couldn't sing, dance, or twirl a baton, so Ned and I decided that I could change a flat tire. My props were ready on the stage. I came out in overalls. Again, the bright light followed me around. Instead of a baton, I twirled a wrench. Instead of walking around in high heels, I rolled a new wheel in. When I was done, the cheers were deafening. Then it was time for the swimsuit competition and the question and answer portion. After that, the results would come out. We all walked back on stage. Most of the girls were wearing their bikinis. I wasn't confident enough about my tummy pooch, so I wore a one piece. But it was still the skimpiest thing I'd ever worn in my life. But I didn't have time to feel self-conscious. I wanted to hear the cheering of the crowd again. So I walked out confidently. Then somebody handed me a microphone. Hi, Katie. The host greeted me with a mic of his own. How are you today? I'm a bit nervous, I admitted. I could see Ned in the audience with a big smile on his face. The host finally asked me the question, why did you join the pageant tonight? I took a deep breath and answered, well, I know that I'm not really beauty pageant material, but it's always been a dream of mine. I wanted to prove myself that if I worked hard enough for something, I can achieve anything that I set my mind to. A few months ago, I never thought I could look this skinny, but here I am standing in front of everyone in a bathing suit. The host laughed. Then he asked me if I think I should win. Unfortunately, before I could answer, my stomach answered first. It grumbled. Unfortunately, before I could answer, my stomach answered first. It grumbled a deep, no. Everyone laughed. I was beyond embarrassed. I wanted the floor to open up and swallow me. My stomach blew my chance for me. The girls and I stayed backstage for a while, waiting for the results. Amazingly enough, a lot of the other girls kept coming up to me. They said I did great. I complimented them as well. It was nice just sitting around with a group of pretty girls. For a while, I felt like I was pretty too. When it was time to go back out, I didn't feel the need to win anymore. I already did what I set out to do. I felt confident. I just did something I never thought I would have the guts to do. So it was a complete surprise when they called out my name. There was no chance of winning the top spot, but I still won something. I was second runner-up. 
Here she is, the host announced, the girl with a smile that lights up the room. I stumbled a little to get my sash, crown, and bouquet. When I looked at the audience,